Hello and welcome to Catch More Media. In tonight's show we have something a little bit different for you, as we travel north to Wishaw, Scotland, where we're joined by Daiwa's marketing manager, Stephen McCabney, who gives us a tour of their state-of-the-art factory, as well as a fascinating insight into how poles are actually made. On top of this, we get a sneak preview of Daiwa's new Tournament Pro XLS, which is set to hit the shops very soon. Because I've been lucky enough to have been shown the Daiwa factory before, I decide to let my trusty cameraman, Jordan Holloway, have a stint in front of the camera. And he proves to be quite the presenter. Good morning, Stephen. Welcome, Jordan. I've used a lot of fish and tackle over the last few years. Right. Last week it was my England trial. Right on. And I used Tom's G50. Right. It's the best pole. Best pole ever used. And we're here to see some more poles than that today. Right, well, we're going to give you a tour of the factory. We're going, yeah. to, get, we're going to give you a full insight to how we make stuff here. But particularly, we're going to follow the Tournament Pro X XLS round. We've yeah. Got the first batch going through and uh, you'll see everything from start to finish yeah and uh, the pole particularly it's got um, a significant number of patterns and materials involved um, so we'll show you all that in detail take it it's a length lengthy process then <laughs> yes <laughs> with poles although there's no handles and guides on them there's yeah. a lot of decorating a lot of individual parts and uh, we'll even stop for some lunch in our famous canteen brilliant Let's get going. All right, mate. Let's get started. Hey, Jordan. This is where it all begins. This is our cutting room where we actually cut the individual patterns for all the things that we make here, poles and rods. Yeah. Well, how many parts would go into a pole like an Air XLS? Well, in the one you're going to see today, which is the Pro X XLS, yeah. there's actually, from the 1 to 11 sections, there's 83 different individual parts. There's a lot more than I was expecting that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually 19 different types of carbon as what well. I, what I thought it would be, I thought it would be one cut for one part of a pole. So. There's, there's a significant number of hidden elements in every pole section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The joint reinforcements, the materials that go along the way and around the way. Yeah. The bits that keep it stiff and the bits that keep it round. How many parts is cut for a, light, a rod? Right, well in a rod you're only talking about three sections, compared, yeah. to, compared to a pole that's got 11, yeah. and uh, you're, you don't have the multiple layers of fibre involved, so yeah. you'd be maybe talking about um, no more than 15, so it's quite it's quite different. But we'll give you a tour of all the carbons that we're using here as well. We use up to what's about 50 different types of material in all of the production yeah. process. So there's a lot of um, secrets that you can see today, but some which won't make it to camera. Right. You've probably heard the term pre-preg used a lot when people are describing carbon fibre. That basically means the carbon sheet is pre-impregnated with heat reactive resins and the technology behind resins are what um, is and often the most sophisticated part and we're always trying to achieve lower volumes of resin throughout the production mm. of a bowl Yeah, because that's the stuff that gives weight. We've got a benefit globally at Daiwa of having access to materials that are not openly available in fishing rod manufacture. And here in the UK, we're starting to use materials that have never been used outside Japan. Before. Brilliant, brilliant. So these are some patterns of cut materials. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about them. Well, these bits that we're holding, Jordan, are actually reinforcements. You can see that we've got a couple of shapes. Of, we've got some right angle yeah, corner shapes. Yeah, some different some, shapes. Some of diagonal shapes. Yeah. And these are actually all uh, integral to the reinforcement of the joints. Yeah. And just behind us, you'll see the team are actually tacking the sections together and the component parts yeah. in preparation for the carbon sheets to be attached to the mandrels. So I'm starting to see all these hidden patterns. What happens with them next? Well, we've actually tacked them together into single component elements and they're actually being applied to the mandrels. These are the formers that give us the shape of the pole sections. Yeah. And what you've got is zero and 90 degrees and biased carbon patterns all composed together. And they've been applied to the center line of the mandrel 
and then they are rolled into place on the rolling tables. Mm. So Stephen, I've seen the sections prepared for rolling, what's happening here? Well, we've actually now got the carbon patterns all assembled into effectively the beginning of a tube. Yeah. So we have to secure that into place prior to curing and that's what we're doing now. We're taping it with a heat resistant tape that's wrapped around the full length of the section. And in a lot of our poles we actually um, exaggerate the after effect of that to give us a textured finish. Mm. to assist in the travel of the sections. It was a lot quicker then, wasn't it? For shipping. Yeah, yeah, shipping yeah. experience with the G50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've noticed some of the sections already have cosmetic elements on, like the numbers and yeah. the interlastic kit. Why is that? Well, what we've actually we do is we apply the foil markers and decorations onto the carbon and we actually cure it into the actual wall of the finished section. It saves us having to decorate and paint um, elements like that later Could on. Off. Could come off later on, couldn't it? Yeah. Keeps them on permanently. Just seen the um, sections going into the oven. What's go happening here? Well, this is curing. This is where we expose the assembled sections on the mandrels to 140 degrees centigrade. Yeah, that's hot. That. Uh, yep, and they're in there for two hours. Yeah. And in that process, the resins, the pre-preg resins, break down into a fluid state and merge all the layers of carbon sheets and patterns mm. together into a single wall. So the sections have been in the oven for two hours now. What's the next process? Well, now that they've cured into a section, uh, we have to remove the mandrel once they've cooled, of course, and then the tape has to be removed. Some of the sections just require trimming and a chamfer applied to them, and then they're ready. Or the bigger, the bigger sections, the butt sections, have to be smooth sanded in preparation for the spray painting and screen printing that takes place. Well, the sections are now cured, but they have to be cut, they have to be sanded, they have to be ground, some of the joints have to be smooth. The sections are always made over length, so they have to be trimmed. And, as I said earlier, some of the decorated elements of the sections have to have a smooth surface mm -hmm. before that process can begin. So we're doing three things here, cutting, grinding and sanding. Yeah. You probably noticed as well, we're using a lot of water in the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the occurrence of which there's a lot of carbon pigment. All of that is uh, retained on site. We filter all the water, recycle it, and uh, dispose of all that residual waste, through, but not through landfill, but through controlled means. So, Stephen, we're clearly in the decoration section by what we're wearing here. Yeah, we've got your shoe covers and a clean a clean <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we're controlling the environmentals in here because yeah. of the air quality and the air temperature and we don't want any um, particles getting into the paint. Yeah. So we've moved ahead a few steps here actually, we're actually looking at the Aerity XLS sections and as I was explaining, there was some handprint going, handprint being applied. Here we have a smaller section of colour that has to be screen printed, we don't use the rolling screen print yeah. machine, we use a handprint. And uh, these poles have actually had their top coat applied to them and they're now dried, so I think that they're probably ready for mission. Use. Well, for use, yes, <laughs> pretty soon for use, but ready for packing up. 
So Jordan, here we are, the Tournament Pro X, XLS in its finished form. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? Brilliant. What's well, the, I've seen older tournaments, but I haven't seen one with an XLS. What's, what's well, the difference? We've actually had a few XLS editions in the last two years. Um, XLS stands for Extra Long Section. Yeah. And the butt, the, which is the 11th, the 10th and the 9th, are individually 10 centimetres longer. Yeah. Which contributes to the pole in a variety of ways, but the pole's also cut at the front end to a 2mm internal diameter for up to say a 6 but the basic uh, benefit is that, it, that it's fuller length, pole is, the pole is more responsive, feels better and you'll see when you assemble it that the whole action at the back end is, is improved. Well Stephen, this pole, it's something else isn't it, it's a bit of a beast. Well, I think uh, you can see the responsiveness you're getting at the full yeah, yeah, meter. yeah. that's the XLS concept coming into its own. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you think that's good, there's uh, two poles above it in the shape of the Airity and the air. Really? Imagine how, <laughs> how, how good they feel. Very, very special. <laughs> Both Jordan and I left Iowa really impressed. Not only with the outstanding quality of the products, but also the infectious enthusiasm and passion of the staff. Next week, we're back in the Midlands as we join England international Matt Derry for a roach fishing masterclass Makings Fishery near Coventry. Until then folks, tight lines.